Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, is this thing on? Is this thing on? Today's Freedom Friday. Today is August 26, 2016. Uh huh. Harbingers of Collapse. That's the title. Harbingers of Collapse. We're almost through with August. Next week. Then we'll be in September. Mm-hmm. And then the world's going to end. Well, and they're, it's supposed to end, what, August 30th? Something like that. I think yes. it's, yeah, the yes, world's going to end. August 30th. And then the, the, the economy will collapse September 20-something. Yeah. 20, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Which didn't really make sense, because if the world's already gone. Well, then there's nobody here to spend money. Yeah. Hello? Well, maybe there's, you, you see know, the logic here? Yeah. Yeah. I see it. So anyway. <laughs> Did you see the blood red moon over New York the other day? I saw the picture. Yes, I saw the picture. I wasn't in New York either. <laughs> but I saw the picture. It was amazing. It was. It was very beautiful, actually. Well, yeah, it was huge, though. Huge. 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 It was right over huge. Trump Tower, man. Right over Trump mm, Tower. It's a sign. Oh. Amazing. Incredible it's an amazing signs. Amazing sign. Incredible Co- signs. <laughs> Incredible harbingers of collapse. I don't know if the blood moon is a harbinger or collapse, but it's. Sounds good. It'd make a good book. Um, we are going to talk about stuff today. We're going to talk about this weird black. They call it a slime. I but know. But it's not really a slime. It's more like a bacteria or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, some kind of growth. A weird black slime that's taking over the monuments, monuments at Washington, D.C. And they can't deal with it they have experts scientists from all around the globe to get rid of it and it won't get it won't disappear they can't even figure out what it is they don't even know what it is to me that's a harbinger it's a harbinger harbinger and then i think we all know that american journalism is collapsing it's collapsing it's sad (laughs) when you watch When you try to just watch a little bit of news or something, even local news, it is sad. But I think that statement is long overdue, don't you think? Yes. I mean, they cannot even do a story on a local kid receiving a Ninja Turtle backpack Mm -mm. without some kind of political agenda. agenda. It is really, really bad. It's uh, Freedom Friday. They say Freedom Friday is the only place to go to get real news. Mm-hmm. 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 That's what they say. The pronoun they. <laughs> and then here's something that's great. You're not going to believe this, Ms. Capel. Okay. I actually have an article. Satan endorses one of the political candidates. Yeah, it's not Trump. <laughs> well, it's either Gary Johnson or the uh, the crazy one. <laughs> it's the crazy one. Oh, my Lord. Satan? Yeah, endorses that's pretty, her. That's pretty scary. I know, I know. Okay, and then Americans. This is really sad. A new research by Pew organization, not Pepe Le Pew, but just Pew, mm-hmm. found that Americans are giving up on God and well, their belief in miracles. Isn't that statement way overdue? Yeah, I think so. Just like the collapse of journalism. And this is why we are in the condition that we are in, because people have turned away from God. And when we get to this article, it's going to be interesting, honestly, dear listeners. It's going to be interesting because they break it down to like why people are rejecting yeah. God and stuff, why they're not believing. It's pretty forthtelling. Then, along with that story, I just have to talk about this lesbian pastor oh, from the Methodist Church. Who avoids a church tri- trial by um, stepping down, mm-hmm. but she's trying to change. It's yeah. you know, no wonder people don't believe in God. There's no Christians. There's no Christianity displaying Christian no morals and values anymore. Yeah. So you don't blame people. It's they a harbinger. Of they collapse. don't see Christian. They don't see Christ no. in the Christians, Mm-mm. which is really really sad and really. scary because you're going to be held accountable for that. Hmm. Regardless, yeah, it's a bad, 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 bad thing. And then this this crazy woman. We have to put this under can't fix stupid because you can't fix stupid. This this crazy lady. Um, she she gets mad at her sister 
because she thinks that her sister doesn't want her at the house. I wouldn't know why. So she goes into her room and she decapitates a python. That's a pet snake. A python and some other boa constrictor type of thing. And then she eats their heads. (laughs) Nasty. (laughs) Yeah. They think that she might have some mental illness. Really? I don't know. I don't want to judge. I don't want to judge. Maybe she's passive aggressive. What do you think? Maybe the snakes... I don't know. Maybe the snakes wanted to do it. And then this is a shocker. We're going to we're going to end the show on this story and it's going to shock everybody. In fact, you're going to go, "Oh my. Had I known, I would have never known that. I would have never connected those dots." We're going to connect some dots for you, folks. You're going to be amazed. Okay. I'm just going to say it right here. There's a study that says syphilis is on the rise in gay men. I know. I know you're well, going. I'm how? glad they said something. I know. You're I going, always suspected that, but you know. I'm thinking, how could that sure. be? How <laughs> could that be? It's if it's promoted as a lifestyle by our our media and by our government. How could it possibly be dangerous? I don't get Even it. Romans, the Book of Romans, first chapter talks about that. But see, no one listens to uh, what do they call it? Two thousand year old book. <laughs> So antiquated. So antiquated. But anyway, scientists are like, uh, hey, guess what, gay guys? Yeah. Mm, you're killing yourself. I <laughs> know. Oh, shock, shock. So before we get on to the stories, see what I just did? I just named all the stories we're going to do. Uh-huh. That's called a hook. Hook. Now, everybody listening, they're hooked. Hook. They want to turn us off. No, they want to go. Because they want to hear about the. The snakes. The, the snakes. snake head mm-hmm. stuff. They're going to. They have to wait. They have to wait. Yes. Because it's a hook. It's a hook. So they have to wait after the scripture reading and after the commercial break. Well, they're just waiting for the scripture reading, I'm sure. Well, they just want to hear you do it because no one else does it like you. That's right. No one. No one. I just dropped my pencils. <gasps> okay. You still use pencils in this day of age? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell the readers. I'm going to tell the readers. I'm going to tell the listeners what Miss Kapow does. In fact, I told Rick Who's today. Rick? The gym owner. I was talking to Rico today. Oh, that Rick. Yeah. I told him. Because <laughs> He was trying to show me this YouTube video, and he couldn't get it to work. Aww. And so he was talking about technology and um, how weird it is. And I said, well, do you know that Linda... That'd sti- be me. <laughs> and this is true. And I'm, this is honestly a true story. Oh. I said, do you know that Linda actually will make a grocery list on a post-it note mm-hmm. and then stick it on the face of her? iPhone. <laughs> Instead of opening the iPhone, right? And uh-huh. then you got to find notes. Uh-huh. And then you got to click notes. And then you got to go, oh, new entry. And then type, 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 type. It's just easier to just write it down on a stick of note. Yeah. I mean, it is. It is. And, and so then you, using the, the, phone, the phone as a hard. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a pad. As a, uh, so I can mark it off as I go. <laughs> So she she uses a postal, and it sounds funny. It sounds crazy. He laughed too. Rico laughed. But it's easier. It is easier. It's than, time effective too. Yeah. Then to open up all this crazy technology to make it work. Anyway, I don't know how I got there, but uh, it's because you you're did. using pencils. <sighs> okay. With erasers. Yes, I do. Those big those big school erasers. I know. I like those. I all right. I'm going to read from Isaiah 24 one through six. And it says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth upside down, and scatters abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of ushery, so with the giver of ushery to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken his word. The earth mourns and fades away, the world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the cursed devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned. And few men left. That scripture right there almost makes me want to cry. I mean, it does. It just, it wells up in yeah. me. Because that that prophecy, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. My goodness, that's right in front of us. Yeah. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you take your theological, historical, contextual, lexical, grammatical, mm-hmm. right? Hermeneutic to it and go, well, this applied to pre-Babylon 587 BC. You could do all that, and I'm sure it has a historical antecedent to it. Sure it does. But my goodness, it's a prophecy mm-hmm. that we is it's being fulfilled right before my little blue eyes. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> even have blue eyes. to me. I choose to have blue eyes today, okay? All right, all right, all right. It's that's amazing. Yeah, it is. That's an amazing, amazing prophecy. It's it, it goes it's right with the harbinger of collapse. It's like it does, doesn't it? And it's it affects everybody. That it's scripture just like says, "The Lord gave it to me." Yeah. Wow. That is weird. weird. That's weird. Okay, black slime. But first, first, I have to take a break from our from sorry for, for our sponsors, our many many sponsors. Okay, so just listen. We'll be right back. I don't know what all this fuss is about, about these pestilence. I think the scientists are doing a great job. Clueless? In the dark? Uh, I think the government's doing a good job. Have no idea what is really going on? I have an app for that. Kapow Radio Show app for iPhone and iPad. Kapow Radio Show app for Android. Get the app. Get a clue. Hey, Vinny. I love politicians. I think they've got my best interest in mind. Get the app. Get a clue. FifthHookMedia.com Okay. Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia here in the United States. This is from the Daily Mail. They're being slimed. Slimed. A gross black slime creeps over Washington, D.C.'s most famous monuments. It's almost like the blob. Yeah. You don't want to... You don't want to poke it with a stick. No. Because you know what happens. It climbs up the you stick. You don't want to taste it either. You don't want to lick it. You don't want to lick it. You don't want to go, huh, hmm, can I get high on this slime? You know someone's going to do it. Oh, yeah. No one knows how to get rid of it. I know every man, every man listening to my voice is saying, you take a pressure washer, you put three-quarter bleach, one run with water, and you just blow it. Right? Every man knows that. You just or clean cover it. cover it with duct tape. I like that idea. Or salsa. Salsa. Wow. Now you're you're deep in you're digging uh-huh. deep into the, the 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 Mesoamerican solutions. Exactly. But apparently, these things don't work. I don't I don't know why the scientists don't even know what this stuff is. Yeah. So see, that's crazy. Yeah. Hear us out on this. They're calling it a biofilm, which I think is interesting because bio means life, mm-hmm. right? So they're calling it like a, a live film organization. On life. Hey, maybe it's a movie. <laughs> it's been creeping over the National Mall monuments and other iconic areas for a decade. Ten years. All I'm just going to say, Obama came into office in 2008. Yeah. It's been eight years. And it's interesting how it came on scene and it's getting worse mm-hmm. since Fine. since the socialist president. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Not only socialist, but satanic. It's Luciferian. Darkness. It's mm-hmm. blackness. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Abraham Lincoln, who's now dead, mm-hmm. Thomas Jefferson, who's now dead, they've been slimed. Slime. Slimed, I tell you. A mysterious black slime has been steadily oozing over the most famous monuments, including Lincoln and Jefferson memorials. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jefferson's memorials, the white marble dome around it, it's slowly turning gray from the icky substance. They call biofilm. It's not actually a slime, but more of a powder. Mm. So I don't know why they call it a slime. I think it sounds more dramatic to say slime, yeah. I guess. But it's also creeped over Arlington National Cemetery, over the Washington Monument, and the tombstones, Ms. Kapow, of Congressional Cemetery. Wow. Pretty, See, it's taking over. Pretty creepy. Yeah, yeah. got pictures of it. It's pretty nasty. Yeah, so it's, it's all this white marble, and then it has this this black junk all over it. 
I guess when you touch it, it's actually dry. It's not slimy, but dry. Mm. And because of the dryness, it's more difficult to remove or or clean. They oh, oh no what? no no I was, go ahead. They say because it's a biofilm, it's a colony of microscopic organisms, so it's alive, and it really needs to grow its nutrients and a surface such as stone for it to to work. See, we just said don't touch it. People touch it, and it doesn't come off your hands. No. And now they're slimed. They're slimed. And then they're going to creep up the stick. Yeah, and then they're going to cook our burgers. Up the arm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. And then they're going to drip slime onto your burger. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've seen the movies, man. Oh, I know. I've seen Quarantine. I know how it ends. (laughs) It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Rain can cause pits to form in smooth stone surfaces over time, creating the perfect Petri dish for the slime. Hmm. I don't know about that. But they can't get rid of it. That's the deal. They're having a hard time getting rid of it. They have experts from all over the world coming over, looking at it. Um, They say it's, they don't know what to do with it. A team of global scientists, a team of global scientists are trying to attack the problem. Mm -hmm. They say it's very frustrating and it's one of those things the more we look into it, the more questions we ask, the more we come up with all sorts of theories and ideas. But to date, there is no known permanent solution to get rid of biofilm. Wow. Crazy. So anyway, it just, I don't know. It smacks of a harbinger to me. Doesn't I agree. it? Do you remember way back when the, um, the presidential seal fell off of yes. Obama's I do remember Podium. that. I just saw it the other day in one of the videos. Did you? Mm-hmm. And then his car, his motorcade was going down somewhere. And, and it fell. The so. pers- and I remember when that happened. I'm thinking, oh, that's that's like an omen. omen. That's like a mm-hmm. sign that uh, your presidency is going to be failed. And sure enough, it is. Mm-hmm. He'll go down his history as the worst POTUS or POTUS that we've ever had. Mm-hmm. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. The dude's horrible because he's a Luciferian socialite. Yeah. A socialite? Yeah. Maybe I meant an ophite. Ophite. That's a socialist ophite. That means serpent worshiper. So anyway, I I think the black slime has something to do with that, Jerry. Yep. I really do. I think so. Okay. How about American journalism collapsing before our eyes? Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. This is amazing because I think we talked a little bit about it last week. It's just, it's stupid out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I really, not that I so much enjoyed news shows, but you would get informed Sure, watching, you know, Hannity or O'Reilly or even uh, that crazy gal, uh, Madow, Rachel Madow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to like her style. You know, hey, I listen to the other sides. I'm open minded, mm-hmm. but it's so crazy now. I can't listen to anybody. They're yeah. driving me nuts. They're driving me nuts. Well, it used to be a journalist would would just report the news. It was unbiased. Yes. Now it's biased, you know. And now they use it to to, to attack and make sure that people hear their agenda. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you're not getting both sides. You're just getting one side. That's not journalism. No, and it's, they're always trying to sell something to you. Just mm-hmm. sell it to you. It's the same thing with some of these movies and TV shows. It's you, you just you listen to the words. You go, wait a minute, what's what's up with this agenda all the time? Come on. Anyway, this is from the New York Post. They say Donald Trump may or may not fix his campaign. Hillary Clinton may or may not become the first female president. But something else happening before our eyes is almost as important. And I agree. The complete collapse of American journalism as we know it. This is the New York Post. Yeah, see, but it's also an attack on the First Amendment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's being censored. That's a good point. It is being censored. Mm-hmm. And only one side, only one agenda. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's, you'll find most people, well, that have eyes to see on this, it's like you can't believe anything. No. You can't believe anything that's coming out. Because you got to question everything. It's like, hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll hear something and then I'll say, hmm, 
maybe it's just the opposite of what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Or what are they trying to, how are they trying to manipulate me to think a certain way? Exactly. The frenzy to bury Trump is not limited to the Clinton campaign and the Obama White House. They are working hand in hand with what was considered the cream of the nation's news organizations. And that's the truth. The shameful display of naked partisanship by the elite media is unlike anything seen in modern America. This is from the New York Post. Yeah. They're part of it. And they're saying this. They go on. They say the latest broadcast networks, CBS, NBC, ABC, major newspapers, all major newspapers like New York Times, Washington Post, have jettisoned all pretense of fair play. Their fierce determination to keep Trump out of the Oval Office has no precedent. Mm. We've never seen anything like this. 2016 is a bizarre, bizarre year. And it's not going to get any better. Nope. Indeed, no foreign enemy, no terror group, no native criminal gang suffers the daily beating that Trump does. The mad mullahs of Iran, who call America the great Satan and vow to wipe Israel off the map, are treated gently by comparison. Mm. By torching its remaining credibility, in service of Clinton, the mainstream media's reputations will likely never recover, nor will the standards. That's true. After this, you could never watch. I, I can't even watch Fox and have they can they can't have any credibility with me. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Definitely. Besides their um what do you call it? clones. Mhm. It's weird. Have you watched some of these newscasters, man? They're not like they're like robots. Yeah. We saw one the other day. I wish I knew her name. Yeah, I don't, don't know her name. She I've was I've never on, seen her before. No. She was on Fox. Um, I don't even know what who what show she was hosting or filling in for. And she had dark hair, but in the face and her mannerisms in her face and her features of her face, she looked almost exactly like Megan Kelly. Mm-hmm. It was really weird. I mean, I said, this gal looks like Megan, except she has dark hair. And it's almost like they came out of the same cloning laboratory. I mean, I'm serious. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always said that though, because there's too many celebrities that look like other celebrities. You yeah, know what I mean? and why would they be celebrities and not a plumber? Why would they go into acting mm-hmm. and look like this? It's like they come out of the same. Okay, here I go. Alien abduction spaceship pod. It, it's really weird. It's really. I think they're among us, folks. Mm-hmm. They they look they look kind of like us, but they got glitches. They're glitchy. Mm-hmm. They're glitchy. Anyway, I, I, I digress. I digress. Liberal bias in journalism is often baked into the cake. The traditional ethos of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable leads to demands that government solve every problem, favoring big government. Then, because routine among most journalists, especially young ones, mm. then they buy into this. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So the, the writer of this article says, I know because I was one of them. I started off at the times while the Vietnam War and civil rights movement raged and I was full of certainty about right and wrong. Mm. He says, my editors were too, though in a different way. Our boss of bosses, the legendary Abe Rosenthal, knew his reporters leaned left, so he leaned right to keep the paper straight. Mm. That meant the Times, except for the opinion pages, was scrubbed free of reporters' political views. An edict that was enforced by giving the opinion of news operations separate editors. Mm. The church and state structure was one reason the Times was considered the flagship of journalism. See, because they had a checks and balances and they mm-hmm. were trying to give the audience both views. Yes, yes, and not just have somebody leaning far left Mm -hmm. and writing with that kind of bias or leaning far right and writing with that kind of bias. You know, let's look at both sides. Yeah. Well, he says those days are gone. The times are now 
uh, the Times, meaning the newspaper, now is so out of the closet as a Clinton shield that is giving itself permission to violate any semblance of even handedness in its news pages as well as its opinion pages. Boy, you got to believe, you got to, you got to really, you know, see that. And it goes on and on. It says a recent article by a media reporter, Jim Rutenberg, uh, began this way. He says, quote, if you're a working journalist and you believe that Donald J. Trump is a demagogue playing to the nation's worst racist and nationalistic tendencies that he cozies up to anti-American dictators and that he would be dangerous with control of the United States nuclear codes. How the heck are you supposed to cover him? Yeah, that's true. Good point. That's true. They talk about they talk about the clear assumption is that many reporters see Trump that way. And it is noteworthy that no similar question is raised about Clinton, Mm -hmm. whose scandals are deserving only of scrutiny. But they don't really, really report and really get down to it. Right. Mm hmm. Rutenberg approvingly cites a leftist journalist who calls one candidate normal and the other abnormal. But Clinton is hardly normal to the 68% of Americans who find her dishonest and untrustworthy, though apparently not a single one of those people writes for the Times. So statistically, that makes the Times abnormal. Right. Man. And you can go on and on. The... The case is, is that we are in a time where our journalism, you don't have proper coverage of any kind of, especially political news story. It's, it's bizarre. It is. It really is bizarre. And we, we see this over and over again. The mainstream media, the MSM it also stands for males having sex with males. Mm. It's kind of interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah. MSM, mainstream media, male sex, male. Mm. Okay. Okay, this is a little tug and cheek article. That oh, I we, thought it was real. <laughs> <laughs> because the news said it, I thought it was real. It's from Waterford Whispers News. Don't ask me what they're about. But this article, it's tongue in cheek. The only reason I'm reading it is not for a political stance, but because it's it, Satan speaks in it. And he says some stuff about America that I found quite interesting. Mm-hmm. It's entitled Satan endorses Hillary Clinton. That's funny right there. That's funny. You hear the laughter. Presidential candidate Hillary Clinton has once again stepped a little closer to securing one of the most sought-after political positions in the world. After what? Being publicly endorsed by Satan. Satan. Yeah. Uh, they call it, they call it, it's a first in the U.S. slash interdimensional relations. Uh, it's a first in history. <laughs> Speaking at a rally held in New York this afternoon, Satan said he would fully support the Clinton campaign and stated that he will do everything in his power to help the 68-year-old secure her place as the first female president in America's short but eventual, eventful, I'm sorry, history. Now, here's what I want to get to, because I'm not just being mean to Hillary, but this article has a, a quote by Satan that I thought was pretty good. Satan says, quote, I love America and everything it stands for. Brother. That's how Satan opened up his speech. He says, I love the way you guys just take what you want when you want it without fear of reprisals. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I adore your country's corrupt behavior and continuing propensity for violence and your cunning ability to cover it up as some form of retribution for attacks on your soil, which you ingeniously orchestrate yourselves. He added... You guys are even putting me to shame here. And I could not think of anyone else more perfect than Hillary to guide you through the next four to eight years because, let's face it, it's going to be hell. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. 
Wow, that's really clever. It really is. And then following a roar from the spectators, the devil incarnate went on to slam Donald Trump as an amateur, claiming he's too soft and stupid to run for the American presidency. Satan says, what fool lets everybody know what he's thinking? Satan pointed out, at least Hillary keeps all her real emotions and ideals locked away from public knowledge. You can't have an openly racist president in this day and age. You've got to be clever, more clever than that. You've got to be Hillary smart. (laughs) And then it ends with him taking up Hillary's hand and chanting to the crowd, vote Hillary number one, vote Hillary number one. And then he disappears in a flash of, of light. Fire. Yeah. So did that really happen? I don't know. Is it true? I don't know. What do you think, Mr. Me? Well, I do think he endorses her. I do. I just don't think he talks at the podium. No. But I read it on the news, on the whisper, whatever it is, and that's what it said. This is sad. Let's get down to some serious reporting here and commentary. This is from the Washington Examiner. Where Americans are giving up on God and on miracles. Miracles. This is from the Pew Research Foundation. This is sad. This is sad. It says, Half of Americans who have left their church no longer believe in God, leading a surge of nearly one quarter of the nation who have no affiliation with any religion, according to a new survey. Pew Research Center said Wednesday that 49% of what they term nuns N-O-N-E-S, N-O-N-E-S, yes. left their church and religion because they don't believe. Another 20% said that they don't like organized religion. Other reasons included common sense and a lack of belief in miracles. The survey is the latest from Pew that demonstrates a growing trend in America. More and more people are junking religion and many are giving up on God. Pew interviewed several respondents to try and find a reason. Pew said, for example... About half of current religious nuns, N-O-N-E-S, who were raised in a religion, 49%, indicate that a lack of belief led them to move away from religion. This includes many respondents who mention science as the reason they do not believe in religious teachings, including one who said, I'm a scientist now and I don't believe in miracles. Others reference common sense, logic, or a lack of evidence, or simply say they don't believe in God. Here's some examples, and and I thought this part was really good. These are examples of reasons why people are unaffiliated uh, with with God at all. The first category is don't believe. Mm -hmm. It says here, learning about evolution when I went away to college. Too many Christians doing unchristian things. That one's bad. Religion is the opiate of the people. Rational thought makes religion go out the window, lack of any of sort of scientific or specific evidence of a creator, I just realized somewhere along the line that I didn't really believe it. And I'm doing a lot more learning, studying, and kind of making decisions myself rather than listening to someone else. That's under the category of don't believe. I thought number two that stated too many Christians doing unchristian things. Yeah. See, they don't see Christ yeah. in the Christian walk. mm that's bad. Or in, or in our churches. Very bad. Um, here's a second category. They dislike, or, they dislike organized religion. I do too, but mm-hmm. I haven't given up on <laughs> my faith. But these, these people have because of that. They say, I see organized religion groups, religious groups as more divisive than uniting, which is very true. Mm-hmm. I think that more harm has been done in the name of religion than any other area. Very true. I no longer believe in organized religion. I don't attend services anymore. I just believe that religion is a very personal conversation with me and my creator. Because I think religion is not a religion anymore, it's a business. It's all about money. Mm. Very true. The clergy sex abuse scandal. And the last one is the church's teaching on homosexuality. See, A a lot of this is Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Because when you read Christian... We're all lumped in together. We're even lumped in with the the, the Mormons and the um, SDAs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're either Christian or you're not Christian. Or Muslim. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Or Jew. Or or atheist. Yeah. 
this uh, the this other category is religiously unsure slash undecided. One says, I don't have a particular religion because I am open-minded, and I don't think there is one particular religion that is right or wrong. Another one says, I feel that there is something out there, but I can't nail down a religion. The last one says, right now I'm kind of leaning towards spirituality, but I'm not too sure. I know I can pray to my God anywhere. I do believe in a higher power, but I don't need a church to do that. See, those kind of people you could probably talk to a little more right? because they're just kind of undecided they don't like religion, but they know there's something wrong out there. You could probably deal with them. The first and second group are going to be a little bit harder mm-hmm. because they're looking for hard evidence, scientific evidence, yet they cannot prove evolution. Mm-hmm. There's, they can't show me an animal that's evolving from one species into another. Right. <laughs> you can't, they, can, they can't show me an animal that once was a fish or a mollusk and now is a primate. Mm-hmm. So they can't See, prove that either. This is the manipulation of the media. It is. You know, they keep spouting off evolution, evolution. Then eventually, some people are going to go, mm, you know, evolution, like the the, the Earth being uh, flat. Yeah. Pretty soon, people are going to believe that the Earth is flat and not there, round. There's too many of them already mm-hmm. who believe in that. Okay, the last category is inactive believer. It says I just basically stopped going to church when I went to college and never picked it up. It, I was never super religious. Next one, I don't practice any religion and I don't go to church or participate in any of the rituals of the church. And the last one says, I don't have time to go to church. Yeah. I, it, there's several of these categories where people said they were in college. The first one that don't believe, it says learning about evolution when I went away to college. This last one says, you know, when I went to college, I quit believing. The education they're getting also. Mm-hmm. It's... An antichrist world, antichrist Very education. Yeah, that's what again. Even in Christian colleges and universities. Oh gosh, yes. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's absolutely. And you got the, the Jesuits mm-hmm. universities, and oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Well, going along with that story is something that's uh, rather annoying. Yeah, this one is annoying. The gay pastor who agreed to leave her post at the johnson county church she is she's a pastor of a methodist church the united methodist church so she comes out to her congregation and tells them she's gay as a two dollar bill right and she did it in hopes that it would change the church Right. Regarding the denomination's stance on homosexuality. So she was hoping it would do some good. But eight months later, for her admitting that she was gay as a $2 bill, that hope, for now at least, seems gone. And at the end of August, she's got to go bye bye. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what she does. Apparently, there in the United Methodist Church, they do what they call a church trial. <laughs> Sounds creepy. That is creepy. Doesn't it? A church trial. Yeah, it sounds like the Salem witch hunt. Yeah. So, well, the Pew Research people mm-hmm. that said, you know, they see anti-Christian stuff or weird, you know, this kind of stuff doesn't do any good for, for biblical Christianity. Right. It's just weird. Yes. So to avoid a church trial, which would have stripped her of, um, See, her power is to be a pastor. In other words, she couldn't marry people. She couldn't marry Barry. She couldn't do those those things you know, that the state allows her to do. If she would have lost the trial, which she would have, they would have stripped her of those powers. So by resigning, she gets to keep her powers as, right. as a reverend. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't you think something's wrong with that, too? Yeah, I do. So now she can still marry and bury and do all those mm-hmm. things and get another pastorship somewhere else. Right. And she doesn't lose her. Because there are her. some Methodist churches that would be okay with this. Probably. I, and they, they name some of these other denominations that would. Yeah. See? So she all she has to do is switch sides. Exactly. She's already switched once. Switch yeah. again. Yeah. Switch hitter. Go bat left. <laughs> <laughs> so on um, this... Wednesday, last Wednesday, she she said she was glad to avoid a trial because it could have resulted in her losing her credentials. 
um, and she could never pastor again. So she thinks this is her calling from God. See, because God is not done with her yet. God's not done with her yet, right? So, in the meantime, she's going to work in lay ministries for a nonprofit as she continues to hope for a policy change in the denomination's book of discipline so she, she could return to the pulpit. Mm. See, right there is weird too. Book of yep. discipline. I mean, I don't know. Do you want to go to a church that has a book of discipline and has church trials? No. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Of course, God's not done with her yet, she says. That's right. So it took 13 hours to reach some kind of agreement, but this 53-year-old lesbian pastor said, I've signed away my right to live out my calling, to be most fully who God called me to be. I hope only for a time. My heart is broken, yet I trust that God will work through even this for good. So she stepped down, but she gets to keep all her her goodies. Mm-hmm. And she can work for a nonprofit and everything. Oh, let's see. They say the United Methodist Church says the agreement was reached to avoid the harm and trauma of a trial. Mm. No United Methodist Church can appoint Meyer as pastor, the church okay. statement said. But she may be hired to perform functions equivalent to those of a lay staff person. Mm-hmm. And she got a severance pay of thirty-seven grand, which was a yearly salary. Okay. So they gave her a yearly salary to go away, basically. Now, Rita Jones, who's president of the United Methodist Women in Edgerton, and she's the secretary of the church council, said the congregation was greatly disappointed to lose Meyer. We want a gay pastor. We want a gay pastor. We want a gay pastor. Rita Jones says she is the same person who walked through the door the first day. Of course she is. She was gay as a $2 bill the first day she came into your congregation. She just hid it for a length of time Mm -hmm. because now she wants to do change. She goes on. She says, a congregation never agrees 100% on anything, but a big majority here supported her and wanted her to stay. Do you notice there's no scripture? There's no Bible. No. You don't, you don't have to agree what God says or what the scriptures say. You just have to, you know, you don't agree with each other. Everybody's different. Exactly. Rita says, she's an excellent pastor and we're sorry to see her leave and we wish her the best. Mm-hmm. We want a gay pastor. Yeah. Okay, here's the other Christian denominations that allow gayness. The Episcopal Church, write that one down. I don't want you going to an Episcopal Church. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. (laughs) You see, there's different branches. You know, I don't know if all Lutheran churches do, but the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America does. The Christian Church or Disciples of Christ. That sounds like a, a... A motorcycle gang. Yeah. Disciples of Christ. The United Church of Christ and the Presbyterian Church of the USA. Those denominations already allow gay clergy, but the Methodists have stuck to the ban. You know why? Because they're conservative and the liberals think it's time for change. Mm. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. But anyway, she's... um, She's sad because she has to leave and that the, the, the domination won't change their stance for right now. But wrong. someday they're going to wake up and they're going to realize that that dusty old scriptures, those, those, those archaic beliefs and sin and sexual immorality and all that nonsense is getting in the way of their business. Hmm. It's not good business. It's not good marketing. Okay, especially with the Pew Research coming out and saying, hey, no one's believing you anyway. Mm-hmm. You got to do something to make it attractive. You got to put food on the table. <sighs> you sound so sarcastic, <laughs> Ms. Capel. Okay, you can't fix stupid. You can't fix stupid. Are you ready for the can't fix stupid desk? I am. Okay, take it away. No jail. For a woman who decapitated snakes with the scissors and ate its heads. Is that wrong? Well, I wouldn't do it. 
It says a woman who decapitated two pet snakes with a pair of scissors and tried to swallow their severed heads while drunk has escaped a prison term. Jennifer Lampe, 28, was given a four-month suspended sentence after subjecting the reptiles to a prolonged and painful suffering before they eventually died. See, that's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong. wrong. Why would she do that? Because she's demon-possessed. She's demon-possessed, yes. Uh, Lampe of Church Stretton in Shore... Shropshire had been drinking whiskey, amaretto, and lager prior to killing the animals on April 8th. Wow. She was living with her sister at the time of the incident and had become agitated after fearing she was no longer welcome there. I wonder why. Yeah. I, I, wa- I just wonder why. I know. She wouldn't be welcome. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, after yelling and swearing, she had taken scissors and a knife to her room where the boa constrictor and a bull python were kept. Nice mm. little pets to have. Yeah, see, there's something, there's something already yeah. wrong. Right. Mr. Price said when her sister saw the defendant in her bedroom, she had a boa constrictor under her top and was covered in blood. And about three quarters of the snake could be seen. The defendant was hysterical. The defendant's sister called the police, and officers found her with the headless, albeit still moving, body of a boa constrictor around her neck. Lempe had vomited up the heads and placed both in her trouser pockets as she wanted to keep them. See, That's it just nasty. gets... That's nasty. It gets weirder and weirder. You just can't fix this kind of demonic stupid. No. You the can't s- fix it. You can't fix it. The snakes experience prolonged and painful suffering, and... um. The, their heads still can remain operable after an hour of decapitation. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Her- Sarah Cooper, who's her um, uh, attorney, she said that her client is vulnerable and lone and a loner, and she has some mental health problems. Some well. some, some mental some. health problems. This is what the, she said. It's a bizarre set of circumstances. Needless to say, the animals have suffered. They shouldn't have. She knows that. And so Lampe uh, pleaded guilty to two of the char- two charges of causing unnecessary suffering to an animal at an earlier hearing, and has been banned from keeping animals for five years. I'll tell you what I mean because they're reptiles and snakes. There's there's not a big outrage, you know, and be like, but they're well, still they're animals, living, yes, living creatures. Yes, and she has a re- if she's going to have them as pets, she has a responsibility to care for them. Yeah. You know, had they been dogs or cats yeah. or puppies and she did that, you can imagine the outrage, mm-hmm. you know. But th- this here, here's a yeah. totally demonic, I mean, you talk about Harbingers a collapse. I mean, every week there's stories and stories like this and they're global. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's just way out there, yeah. behavior. And you read it so much that it's kind of like, oh, here's another, you know, stuck on stupid. You can't mm-hmm. fix stupid story yeah these kind of stories bizarre. are more the norm yes yeah than they were just a few years ago at all okay this is the coup de gras of the shockers people are going to go i would never guess this but the guardian has reported it's true that syphilis is on the rise <sighs> among gay men yeah, when it should have been confined to history. It should have been confined to history. We should have got rid of this disease a yeah. long time ago when men quit eh, dating sheep. Well, it says infections among men who have sex with men have soared by 232%. Wow. Is that possible? In Two- five years in London, as sex with multiple partners combines with devastating service cuts. Wow. What? And yet, and yet, our society, their society, our global society, won't come out and say this is not a good lifestyle choice. This, yes. my friend, is high risk behavior, mm-hmm. and it will kill you. We won't say that. Instead, we put homosexual lifestyle up on a pedestal on movies, TV shows. Half our politicians are gay. You know, this poor pastor of the Methodist Church wants to change church doctrine. And, you know, it, it just, it's not logical. It's, it's not logical. If the, it's, 
if this is the Zika virus, would they be would they be fighting for uh, for the Zika virus? You know, in TV shows, sure. I have a Zika virus. You know, you're not you're not wrong to have Zika. Those people who don't like you, they're Zika foids. They're Zika phobes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're Zika phobes. They're wrong. <laughs> they're wrong. Bad. Well, anyway, syphilis is passed through unprotected oral, vaginal, and anal sex. It's affected famous people like El Capone and reportedly Hitler. But syphilis is in no way confined to big names, nor is it sexually transmitted infection of the past. Mm -hmm. The 2016 Public Health England, P-H-E, or FE, syphilis report has shown that infection rates are on the up. Mm. with disproportionate rates in London. Isn't that where they have naked cafes and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 2015, the capital accounted for 56% of all cases in England. Wow, over half the cases Mm. were right there in London. With a 22% increase in diagnoses in the year 2014 to 15. Since 2010, the number of cases of syphilis in Londoners has increased by 163%. Wow. Men who have sex with men, or MSM, also mainstream media, but for this, it's going to be men who have sex with men. MSM represent how much? 90%. 90% of all syphilis cases last year Mm -hmm. with a 232 percent increase in diagnosis over the last five years more than half of the men having sex with men diagnosed with syphilis in 2015 were also infected with hiv more than half Mm. the syphilis and hiv and over half additionally tested positive for a separate STI, sexually transmitted infection. Whew. Rates in heterosexuals remain stable, but are higher than ideal. Well, of course, that stands to reason. Though. Yes, because they're going all over doing their thing. You know, bringing it home to their wives and whatnot. In Acts 15, when the early church was dealing with Gentile salvation... And they were dealing with the laws of Moses and all that. They said, here's four things that you will do well to keep. And one of them was avoiding sexual immorality. Mm-hmm. That was 2,000 years ago. Right. It says, you will do well. Hmm. Hmm. Go figure. Safe sex campaigns and targeted prevention efforts are in place. <laughs> That ain't going to help. No. See, they're violating God's law. Exactly. So you can wear condoms or not wear condoms or pretend that you are, and you're going to have education all you want that's not going to work. It's the sin. Mm -hmm. It's the lifestyle. This is a curse you're bringing on yourself. Simple as that. You're bringing on death on yourself. Sexual health care is free and accessible. To both high and low risk groups over there in London. So what's going on? What's going on there? The basic science cannot sugarcoat it anymore, Miss Kapow. You know what's going on? I'm gonna tell you what's going on. There's more condomless sex. It leads to higher rates of syphilis and gonorrhea, chlamydia, and HIV. The list goes on. This is some nasty, nasty people. These people are nasty. Mm -hmm. They're just full of bugs and infection and bacteria and disease that they they bring on themselves. Why? They can't can't control. See, that's even biblical. It is. But who wants to read that old book? Yeah. Untreated syphilis means the disease continues to be passed on. It leads to potentially horrifying long-term medical complications. 
and action is needed. In MSN, men having sex with men, higher numbers of partners is a key reason behind the heavily inflated rates. Wow. I know. I would have never guessed. Compounded by the use of apps such as Grindr. <laughs> Grindr. Okay. Vidnu based and group sex. The reported increased use of chem sex. We talked about that one a month mm-hmm. ago which is the use of recreational drugs used during um, sex, is also of concern. They lowered the sexual inhibitions, making the likelihood of using a condom less likely. Oh, See, yeah, that's true, because you just get caught up in the moment. Oh, yeah. And you throw all caution to the wind. You're, you're looking at this guy. He's got a big hipster beard. He's got a man bun. And you're thinking, now's the moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm throwing caution to the wind. Who would have a man bun like that? I think I'll love them. It's, uh, yeah. Plus your your vision is distorted because of all that whiskey. All the whiskey, the amaretto, the snake heads. Yeah. You know, the cocaine, the flaca. After worrying, another worrying phenomenon is called, I never heard of this. Me neither. Zero sorting. That's S-E-R-O. Zero Zero sorting. That's when men choose partners who have the same HIV status. Wow. So in theory, negating the need to use a condom because both partners both have the same. You're both dying of HIV. So yeah, who so cares? Might as well, right? So however, <laughs> however, it puts both partners at a high risk of contracting a plethora of other sexual transmitted infections. Sure. Because the diseases you have, you give to me, and I give you the diseases I have, and now it's, it's if, if I have mononucleosis, and you have mononucleosis, would you look at me and go, give me a big kiss? Let's just kiss because we're both sick. I don't even like being around you when you have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I guess the answer is no. (laughs) I guess the answer is no. The point, the point of this whole rant here is that it's shocking to these people. And they say they need further study to look at the complex background to the increasing rates of STIs and high risk groups. I mean, they always make it like such a shock. And they say, while syphilis has been a feature of centuries past, there's no doubt that its story now should be confined to the history books. And what are we going to do? See, they can't even resolve this problem, right? Yeah. Nor can they resolve the black slime in Washington. No. Right? No. But now they're trying to figure out a way to circumvent death. Yes. Yes. We, we These can't, are the same morons. Yeah. We can't figure out... Yeah, how to make a pressure washer to get rid of black slime, and we can't figure out how to tell gay people, quit killing yourselves. They can't even get rid of gophers. Oh, gophers are impossible. I was like searching the scriptures to make sure that the new heaven and new earth would be, wouldn't have gophers. gophers. The only scripture I can find was that the lion, <laughs> the, the wolf laid with the lamb, the fish swam with the bird. You I know, really that don't kind think you have to worry about that. Gopher. Yeah, because I don't think gophers are going to be eating your crops. No. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll be like, be laying there with a straw in my mouth, you know, just looking at the sky going, wow, we made it. And a little gopher comes up to make it to pet its little head. You know, something I like that. see you in your mansion with gophers and potato bugs. Oh, I don't like potato <laughs> bugs. But see, you'll like them then. <laughs> They're called Jerusalem crickets. There you have so it. So they could, see? yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they crunch. If you step on them, it's like, crunch. they're too big. Some some insects are just too big to step on. And those are those are the ones. Too. I had Brother Kapow go on a, um, well, we had, the, we, we were going camping, but outside behind in our backyard because... You we know. had five acres, so it's not like a little backyard. No, we this were, was oh yeah, this was at the yeah. at the acreage. But you also did it with in the house, the other house. Okay, some weird. But this was at in Hemet, and uh, he was sleeping in a sleeping bag on the dirt. And when he turned over his 
his uh, sleeping oh, bag. Oh, yeah. There was a Jerusalem cream. Yes. Had <laughs> under co- his. <laughs> oh, my Lord. And that was the last time yeah. I was able to get him to go camping outside. I won't sleep on the ground. I'll sleep on top of a cot. I'll sleep yeah. inside a motorhome with a DVD and a microwave. But I ain't sleeping on the ground. No. That didn't happen. So that I have, was, that you know was the what? last time. I have a man bun, and the ground messes up my man bun. <laughs> I'm a hipster. Okay. <sighs> let's say good night. All right. Then, and then we will um, catch you all later. We thank you for listening to um, Freedom Friday Hour, alternative news, or commentary. Until next week, God willing, ciao, babies. <laughs>